Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are going to be talking about DIYs that I don't hate. So hear me out, because if you've never clicked on one of my videos before, you may be confused. Okay, so I usually talk about, like I talk about interior design on this channel, but I actually really hate DIY. People ask me all the time, like, could you show us some DIY? No, I hate DIYs. I hate them because I hate them for two reasons and I want to like break that down here. So first of all, I'm useless. Like I really am bad at these things. And then two, sometimes I find that DIYs can be a little bit disposable. What I mean by that is people create these amazing items that are really great in theory, but to me, they always just look a little bit cheap and they always feel cheap. Like it's always like, okay, great. You like made a coffee table out of a bunch of pool noodles. Like, great, cool. Yes, it can be done, but should it be done, right? That's the question. I say sometimes no, they should not be done. But today I have found five DIYs that are actually good. Like I don't hate them and they seem perfectly reasonable. I am going to shout out the creators that created them. All of the actual original links to all of these videos that I'm going to be talking about today are all in the description. So actually head over to their channel and make sure to check out these videos because I'm not here to tell you how to do them because again, that's not my job. I'm just trying to showcase five that aren't awful. So let's get to it. Okay, the first DIY that I don't hate is going to be these DIY plaster walls. So I'm going to show you some video here. So this is by a creator called Emma Caitlin. Um, this is where I first, actually the first person I really heard about it from was just Jolie, but then I did a little bit of research and this is the person that I can see. So I will just credit both so that you can go check them both out. Both are obviously going to be slightly different, but they all seem to follow the same process. They seem to just create plaster you buy a canvas and you put these plaster and then you sort of create these little designs now they seem really to want to do these sort of rainbow designs which kind of gives it a little bit of sort of a mid-century sort of feel like I've seen a lot of prints on like society and six and stuff like that that look very mid-century that kind of feels a little bit what they're going for here and it sort of hits on all the trends right you got the neutrals you've got a lot of texture there with the plaster because it's gonna have a little bit of a 3d effect and again you can create some really interesting sort of abstract designs and I'm assuming although I don't think they really show it in these videos you can also add some color to them if you would choose to um, and you can maybe add a little bit of color there if you feel like it and you can actually color the plaster overall I don't really hate these I actually think that they maybe look kind of cute like I do get why people like DIYs because there is something to be said for someone comes over to your house and they're like oh that's beautiful and you can go yes I made it myself and I I get the appeal there I don't value that myself I'm like yeah somebody else made it it's pretty cool. I do totally see the appeal of these DIYs. Again, because you've got the textural component and you've also got this kind of customized design that you're able to create, it's probably also super affordable. I mean, you can buy a canvas or you could, I'm assuming, also cover up some crappy Ikea canvas that's also super cheap. So, you know, feel free to go nuts there. I feel like you can do it. I will also say that if you're looking for somebody else to do it, like an artist that's not, you know, you. You know what? Actually, hold on. Let me show you something. Hold on. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so I want to also give a shout out to someone. Um, her name is Jenna Jones, and she actually creates this art that's kind of, I think, similar to what they're going for in these videos. But she actually has worked really hard to create sort of different colorants and whatever. And so that that way, like the plaster doesn't crack, because I think you might get that with the DIYs. So just something to think about. There are other artists, of course, that are out there. There is other options if you want to maybe buy some art rather than do these DIYs. DIYs, but overall, I think these are effective at doing what you want them to do, which is a neutral abstract art that is going to add a textural sort of component to your space. So these are approved. Okay, next up, next DIY that I don't hate is going to be this Ikea Kallax hack from my good friend Viv over at Posh Pennies. You may all know Viv from Posh Pennies because she is quite popular here on the interior design space. She's actually probably the largest channel that I'm featuring here today. Viv is awesome. She's my bud. I do love Viv a lot. I'm not gonna say she has a questionable DIY. At one point she turned a traffic cone into a side table, which... Viv, they don't always work. You know what? Take it from me. They don't always work. That one was um, a little bit out there for me. I'm like, again, I'm always going to know it's a traffic cone. So I'm a little bit like, 
But anyway, this one is actually kind of cool. She took a Calax unit. If you don't know, the Calax is the like, of course you know the Calax. Every, every dorm room in the world has a Calax unit. It's basically the like boxes that you can get that are customized or they're like different sizes, but basically it's all the little squares that you can get. It sometimes uses a room divider, sometimes uses a bookshelf. It's very sort of dorm room friendly. People love the Calax, but Viv did a really great job because she basically added sort of some rattan or some caning. I think she used rattan in this one, but you could use caning, I'm sure, as well. And she created like rattan doors on the front of the Calax and she painted it. And I think it looks really, really cool. She basically kind of stapled it on the back of these sort of screens. And I think she did a really good job of making it look really beautiful. Of course, she also upgraded the hardware, which is something I always recommend. But I think this one is really good. I think she did a really good job here. As I said, you know, not all the DIYs work, but this one to me, I think is a great way to upgrade. Again, kind of like the first one, if you don't want to do it yourself, check out Norse Interiors if you're also interested in getting sort of caning on the front of Ikea, because you can actually buy caning for the front of the, I don't know if it's the Calax, but it's a bunch of their different Ikea units. So go ahead and check them out if you don't want to do it yourself. But I would say Viv's is a really great option if you want to upgrade a Calax unit for honestly super cheap. It didn't look like it was that difficult. Maybe even I could do this one. Mm, probably not. Okay, next DIY that I don't hate is going to be these concrete trays from George Gomez. So George is very, very cool. I really like his stuff. Again, he is a very different creator here on YouTube than I am. I think our styles are quite similar. Like, I think if you like my sort of style, I think you might like his. He's very modern and I like that. He uses a lot of concrete, which I also really like because I think the concrete DIYs are some of the most effective DIYs for home decor that are out there. And George does a really great job with those. For this particular video, he He's able to take like a terry cloth towel and dunk it in concrete and basically create like a vase. Listen, that's a little bit more out there for me, but the one I'm going to choose for this video is going to be where he takes these silicon trays that he then puts concrete in and he can dye the concrete and to create some really interesting sort of effects in there. And he basically DIYs these concrete uh, trays. One thing to keep in mind is sealing because concrete is very porous. So that is something to be careful of that if you spill on any of these trays, you might want to be careful with that. But this is, you know, a tray that's used to put your keys or maybe jewelry or whatever, like maybe something to put on your desk in your office. They're not meant necessarily to be spill proof or anything, but I think he did a really good job with these. I love concrete as a material and it looks like is fairly easy to DIY. Again, probably not for me, but if you like DIYing things, that can actually be a really great option. I think George really did a good job with these. He does a lot of things with concrete. Check out his channel. But this one's my personal favorite that I have seen so far. Okay, next DIY that is not horrible is going to be sorry that's bad this is actually really good like I'm not saying they're not horrible I'm saying they're actually really nice that is this matte black slat wall now I first heard about this from Becky and Chris but Becky actually credits in her video another channel called love create celebrate so I'm gonna shout out both because I'd first heard of Becky and Chris by the way can I also just say with all these DIYs I can't guarantee that this is the first person to invent these DIYs. There are loads of these things out there, right? Like, so I don't want to hear people in the comment section like, oh, Nick, that person copied What's Her Pickle because she put it on like a freaking blog back in 2003. And now you're like highlighting all these people that are like just copying each other. But like, who cares? It's the internet. Like, get over it. Like, okay, fine. People copy each other and they're sort of inspired by other people and make it their own, you know, get over it. But anyway, here we go. Let's get back to this matte black wall. So Becky and Chris, first featured this in their kind of YouTube studio, because if you don't know, they're really kind of big YouTubers. Photography, Becky's style is amazing. She loves black. Can I just say that? I actually talked about this one in my How to Decorate with Black video, because Becky really loves black. They love dark, moody colors. If that's your style, go check out their channel and their photography is stunning and their videography is amazing. But anyway, but I will say this matte black wall is super, super cool. Basically, they're just able to create these slats. I think they're just basically chopped down wood. I will say Becky and Chris in their video, I think used MDF, but Becky says Love Create Celebrate used real wood. And actually she said that she should have probably used real wood in their project. So maybe go check out Love Create Celebrate as well to go check out their DIY. But um, yeah, I think these are really cool. I mean, I love a slat wall. There's a lot of different manufacturers have created sort of panels for slat walls, but overall, I think these are reasonably DIY friendly. They look fairly easy to do. And because it's done in a matte black and you're able to paint it in a matte color, I think it's going to be a lot easier and more forgiving because you're just painting the slats black as opposed to, let's say, using like a walnut detail where I, for one, would be really scared to cut out large strips of walnut, which is a very premium, very expensive wood. I would feel a little bit nervous doing that myself. 
but using it in a matte black I think is relatively DIY friendly because again you're painting it so you can use a cheaper wood and it won't really matter because um, well you're just painting it anyway so that's kind of really the point. This looks like it's really DIY friendly. This is maybe a little bit more advanced than some of the other ones that I'm talking about on this channel right now but I would say like I wouldn't attempt it but um, maybe if you're quite handy less crafty but more handy and you know your way around a table saw then this is probably a really great option for you. Not for me but maybe for you. Okay my next DIY that I do not hate is from Alana Hurley. I first saw this on TikTok. So this is taking the Ikea stall shoe cabinet and applying a basement wood slat cover. We'll get to that in a second. First of all, let's break this down. Let's first of all talk about that shoe rack. This is a very thin shoe rack that Ikea makes. They've had it forever. I had this back in my rental apartment in Amsterdam, like what, like 11 years ago or something. They're really great because they're so narrow. So they're really awesome to fit in tight spaces, especially those front hall closets, right? So if you don't have a whole lot of room in your front hall closet, because you live in a small apartment or whatever, these are a really, really great option. But they're a little bit boring because we have seen them 10,000 times and Ikea has produced these for about 4,000 years. So Alana's actually installed this like basement column cover, which is from Home Depot apparently, and is a very oddly specifically named item, a basement column cover. Do people have that many columns in their basement that they needed to buy a cover for it? I mean, apparently. But what's interesting about this column cover, because that's a thing, is that it's basically just a series of slats that sort of makes it really easy to fold around well, a column or, you know, a stripper pole or whatever you've got in your basement that apparently you need to cover. So that's what that is for, which again, feels really oddly specific, but that's an item that Home Depot, yes, indeed sells. And Alana, very wisely, took that and thought that kind of looks like a little bit of maybe the trendy slat detail that we just talked about. And she wrapped the stall shoe cover to basically create something that's a lot more interesting and actually is really cool. I really like this one. I think it's a really neat way to upgrade something that is a super basic Ikea item is actually functionally a really great item just because again, it's so narrow. But by adding these basement cover things, you're able to make something that's a lot more interesting and I think really kind of looks cool. So I actually really like this one. I also saw this on hunker.com. So I'm gonna list that down below, but they even credit Alana. So who came up with it? So maybe somebody else did, but for my purposes, Alana really uh, saw this weird item at Home Depot and made it her own and did something really, really neat. So I think it's cool. I think you could also think theoretically stain this or maybe paint it. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to give tips and advice because you know, that's not my, stick to what you know, right? And I, what I don't know is how to make this even better than Alana did. So just go click on her uh, TikTok account, go give her a follow, do that whole thing. And um, yeah, that's kind of, that's a really cool one. I like this one. Okay, that's it for me for today, you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Um, there you go. I talked about DIY. I mean, I kind of talked about DIYs. I didn't do it myself, but yeah, let me know if you like this video. Maybe I'll like scour the internet and find some more. Maybe you know, comment below. Let me know your favorite DIYs. I'd be curious to see some other ones. Not that I'm going to do them, but just because I'd like to learn about what they are and maybe share them with other people here on YouTube that may attempt them. So um, that's it for me, you guys. I will see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.